Welcome to HB RV Lifestyle, the podcast. I am the host, the Honey Badger, here to give it to you straight and transparent about the RV business and <laughs> a lot of other things lately, it seems like. Uh, we got an action-packed, very information-heavy show today. This episode is going to be full of information regarding the RV world, whether you own one now, whether you're planning on buying one, whether you're going planning out your vacations for the year, whether you're planning on selling yours. doesn't matter where you are in your RV journey. This episode is going to be very, very important to you. Now, first off, Happy New Year to everybody. I know I'm six days, well, five and a half days late with that because I'm filming this on January 5th, recording this for Spotify, Amazon, iHeart, and etc. here on January 5th. Um, God dang, is 2023 gone? And I am so glad. 2023 was a very roller coaster ride a year for me. Um, ups and downs, I'll cover that later in the episode. But what I want to really, really start with today is the breaking news that came in to me um, that unless something happens in the next 30 to 45 days, we will lose probably the number one selling toy hauler for 12 straight years starting in 2009, and that is Attitude Toy Haulers. Eclipse Recreational Vehicles is, within weeks, from what I'm understanding, of completely going out of business. <clears throat> it appears that, again, unless something changes drastically, it appears that there isn't enough investors that want to pay the premium to take over the business. I talked to one guy who was a potential buyer and investor into it. And he he's the one that gave me the information. And then his alternate partner, she, uh, who was who's another person that has run a manufacturing plant, not in the RV business, but uh, in an, in another industry. And uh, they were telling me that they actually submitted an offer to buy it back in October and it was turned down. It's sad. It, it actually breaks my heart a little bit because there were a lot of bad things about Attitude, Iconic, and Stellar toy haulers. And it wasn't the look of them or the functionality. It was really the company was crappy towards dealer service departments and towards a lot of dealer principals, a lot of dealer owners too. Dallin was a fabulous guy. Don't get me wrong. I'm not bagging on them. I'm not bra I'm not talking crap about them. It's just a fact of life. If it, you, you couldn't get any warranty claims fixed. So what dealerships used to do, so give you guys an idea. First, no, you know what? Let's go back a little bit first. Let's go back to the inception. So I'm going to give you a little inception, a little background if you don't know who Attitude Toy Haulers was. If you don't know who Iconic and, Iconic and Stellar was. So this manufacturer was actually started roughly about 2007 through really, the it didn't really come to fruition till 2009. How would you like to start an RV manufacturer in the middle of the Great, great Recession? <laughs> I mean, there's some 2006s out there. There's some 2005s, don't get me wrong. But it really didn't get going till after Weekend Warrior went out of business. Uh, the market share for Eclipse RV back in 05, 06, 07, and 08 was not nearly what it was in 09. And it just seemed, I don't, and I don't know who got there first. I don't know if it was Kevin Flores that turned it around. I was good buddies with him for a long time until he left and went to um, another manufacturer a couple of years ago. Um, but Dallin surrounded himself with incredible marketers. And then the one thing that would basically screwed every dealer up was he was the only manufacturer, the only manufacturer 
in the industry that went to the power sports industry, bought a prototype of a side-by-side. -side. Back then, the biggest was the Polaris Razor 1000. And he would build his toy haulers around the biggest, baddest side-by-side -side in the industry at the time. When the Can-Am X3 came out, the four-seater, he went and got one and built every floor plan around the four-seat Can-Am X3. Forest River, terrible toy hauler division. Doesn't matter if it's XLR, doesn't matter if it's any of those places. They're always behind the times to attitude. Now, that being said, in the last three years, somebody woke up at Forest River, somebody woke up at Keystone for the carbon and the fusion, and someone woke up at Grand Design and said, if we don't get our ass in gear, we're going to lose a ton of market share. And at the time, it was Genesis Supreme, RV, and Attitude Toy Hauler's. Those two manufacturers had the big umbrella companies running for their life scared they were going to lose market share in that industry. Now that all being said, that pretty much put dealerships in a really bad position because the way Attitude Toy Haulers treated dealers was just garbage. You were a piece of trash. Unless you were in the inner circle, uh, like the Baruti family and like, uh, you know, um, uh, Frank DeGallis who and Mike Thompson's RV, uh, Niall at Best RV, unless you were really, really tight with him and just took anything and everything that down through your way, you were a pile of crap. If you needed something done under warranty, they wouldn't cover it. What are you talking about? That's normal. So what? So dealerships knew that Attitude Toy Haulers, Iconic and Stellar Toy Haulers, they had you by the brass balls. Because if you didn't have Attitude on your lot, or Stellar, or Iconic, if you didn't have any of the Eclipse brands on your lot, you didn't even get the at-bat. You didn't even get the chance to show a customer a toy hauler. Because that marketing team was at NASCAR events, motocross, BMX, skateboarding events. They were at firefighter uh, fundraisers, first responder fundraisers. These guys were superior marketers to anybody in the industry on the manufacturing side. And you knew, excuse my language... But if you didn't have one of the three brands on your lot, you were fucked. You weren't selling toy haulers. Didn't matter. It didn't matter if you could prove to them that something fit. You were fucked. You weren't even going to get a look. Now, does it mean everybody that walked into the dealership lot bought an attitude? No. A lot of times... They ended up in a Stealth, a Sandstorm, an XLR, a, a Carbon, a Fusion, um, a Work and Play. But everybody was in a rush to catch up with Attitude. Attitude was the... It, I'll put it to you like this, guys. And a lot of you will understand this. Attitude had built such a huge brand and following that it was the only other brand recognizable more for a long period of time than added to toy haulers, Winnebago. That's it. 